Pie Guys. I am thrilled to admit that once again, the weatherman completely off base. This was supposed to be an ugly, rainy, stormy day here in the end times, but it's actually a beautiful day outside here on Wednesday morning, September 11th, 2019. September 11th. Uh, I am... I am not going to go there. I have said, I have made the record clear over the past however many years since I started this channel. If you want my opinion on 9 11, if anybody gives a shit, go over there for Architects and Engineers for Truth. And you will. That's really all I need to say about anybody wondering what Hambone Little Tail thinks about 9-11. Architects and Engineers for Truth know a hell of a lot more about the subject than I do and you do. So uh, now that we've gotten that out of the way, I'm uh, trying to figure out the... Uh, the We Are So Fucked Doomer headline of the day. And, and there's, guys, there are just so many choices. But I'm going to, we're going to go down there to Australia. Which is heading into summer. Our Alert Tries member, Alm, is keeping me posted how we are probably going to look at the most vicious wildfire season in all, possibly in Australia's history, that Australia, before the first day of spring, is already in flames. Some, uh, one of these well-known hotels, these big lodges in the rainforest, burned to the ground a couple of days ago uh, in the middle of a rainforest. It's not even the first day of spring. Uh, so anyway, I don't know whether it was Alm or it, two tribes members, I believe, from Australia. I have an inordinate number of tribes members from Australia. Uh, welcome to the tribe. So two of you, whichever ones you were, uh, have sent me this article from, I guess this is, well, ABC is that the Australian Broadcasting Commission, I guess? Uh, but anyway, two of you have sent me this uh, article, and I'm sad to report. Now, you know, Brother uh, Bill Hilly just fixed my bullshit detector button. When was it, Brother? A week ago, I have already lost one of the batteries because the little back door, so I have no bullshit detector button to read, but uh, you can just imagine how many times I would be slamming the bullshit detector button as we read today's hilarious We Are So Fucked headline from Australia uh, titled when climate distress becomes too much, the philosophy of eternalism, philosophy of eternalism can provide perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> the first time Heidi Edmonds felt this type of anxiety creep up, she became teary and had to go into the bathroom for a cry. Quote, I was looking at my nieces and worrying about their future, not feeling like everything was going to be okay. Close quote. Dr. Edmonds, who holds a PhD from Griffith University's Australian Rivers Institute, is a co-founder of Australian Parents for Climate Action. <laughs> Parents for Climate Action. 
There you go. There, there's a contradiction in terms. A national volunteer campaign group, Dr. Edmonds, is also has two young daughters of her own, you know, in addition to her nieces, and like many young parents, manages sleep deprivation and parenting stress with all of her other responsibilities at work and with friends. And over the last year, she has noticed another kind of pressure weighing on her climate anxiety. This week, the Australian Medical Association declared climate change a health emergency, referencing a higher incidence of mortality rates from heat stress and more mental ill health. Ross Knight, the president of the country's peak body for psychologists, the Australian Psychological Society, says many Australians report some level of concern about climate change. Yes, uh, she points back to a 2012 study that found even then 20% of those surveyed felt climate-related distress at times, you know, seven years ago. Uh, <laughs> Her organization has an online resource dedicated to coping with climate distress and lists fear, anger, guilt, shame, grief, loss, and helplessness as associated emotions. You know, my mother, who is also a shrink, uh, always said that uh, guilt and shame uh, were vastly underrated. And, and I can imagine where guilt and shame uh, place on the list of associated emotions to young parents in Australia and around the world. When her tearful episode happened, Dr. Emmons says she still wasn't sure how to talk to her children about climate change. Quote, you talk to them about nature and caring for nature, and I said to them, mommy's working very, very hard to protect the frogs and the fish and nature. Yes, uh, mommy's working very hard to protect the frogs and the fish. I think if mommy gave a flying fuck about the frogs and the fish and nature, maybe mommy would have gotten her fucking tubes tied. Anyway, Back to this hilarious story. Balancing concern and positivity is part of a long-term strategy for Dr. Edmonds, who says that with the support of family and her community, she focuses on solutions. And another element in her arsenal of hope. <laughs> oh my God. Another element in this young parent's arsenal of hope is the philosophical idea of eternalism, which the this uh, the the Australian broad. Cast Commission, or whatever they're called, uh, calls eternalism a salve for a social affliction. Dr. Edmonds first came across a passage in a self-help book that incorporated eternalism over a decade ago 
And she says it has stuck with her since then. Quote, okay. From the Bliss Ninny, uh, from the Bliss Ninny News, quote, If we think about time as a tapestry, if we think about time as a tapestry, it, al it allows us to focus on giving our children bright moments now, so that no matter what, the future holds, they will have had these wonderful moments, close quote, yeah, before uh, they're engulfed in flames and, uh, and scrounging in the parched dirt for a fucking grain of rice. You know, this is like, uh, yeah, get, get out there, kitties, and enjoy the sandbox while you still can before the whole fucking country of Australia turns into a goddamn sandbox. No matter what their future holds, uh-huh. No matter. No matter. <clears throat> this reference to a tapestry of time resonates with eternalism, a theory that joins the past, present, and future in a single block of time. Christy Miller, the joint director, I guess she's the one who passes out loose joints, of the Center for Time at Sydney University uses the idea of a Persian rug, a Persian rug, to explain the concept of eternalism. When you look down at a rug, she says, quote, you can see the whole thing. None of the rug is any more special than any other bit of the rug. The whole thing creates the entire picture, which is the universe. Close quote. So, a person's life in 2019 does not take precedence over another person's life in 1519 because there is no objective present moment. Uh, <laughs> you know, guys, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm somehow going to resist uh, going off on one of my bliss ninny tirades about your fucking Persian rug. Okay. Dr. Miller explains that eternalism can be a comfort when it comes to grief. Quote, It is true, of course, that your life comes to an end. No shit, Sherlock. In the sense that there will be later times when you don't exist. No shit, Sherlock. But from an eternalist perspective, she says, quote, all of your life is still out there in space-time, so all the things that you did still exist, and some people find that quite consoling. Close quote. The situation does become more complex in relation to climate change because this grief is for a future that has not happened yet. On the other hand, eternalism can also exacerbate climate grief because people can, according to Dr. Miller, quote, feel fairly sure that the future 
that is out there is suboptimal. No shit, Sherlock. <laughs> People can feel fairly sure that the future that's out there is suboptimal. So, does this mean the future is already set and there is no point in taking climate action now? Not exactly, says Dr. Miller, who uses the metaphor of a Rubik's Cube. Okay, we're going from Persian rugs to Rubik's Cubes. I don't know when she's going to get to the pink unicorns. I'm sure she would get to it sooner or later. All right. So, Dr. Miller uses the metaphor of a Rubik's Cube to explain cause and effect in eternalism. Quote, when you twist one bit around, other bits automatically twist in response. Yes, like when you twist a planet by adding uh, 8 billion people to it, you, you know, you, you, you twist a Rubik's Cube planet around other bits automatically twist in response. I think that is the best explanation of the Anthropocene I have ever read in a clueless fucking moron, one of these little self-help, uh, take a free pass to hell, you young, clueless fucking moron breeders. Okay. If the past, present, and future of our world were a single Rubik's Cube, and we wiggled certain elements like carbon emissions now, quote, what you will do is you will wiggle the way the future is. Ah, <laughs> uh, can, can't argue. Shit, Sherlock. Cannot argue with this bliss nitty. Uh, yes, I, I, I think uh, I, I think this is certainly the, uh, the the Rubik's cube in the sky. Yes. In case you don't understand this, quote the later states, meaning the state of the planet, as we continue to twist the Rubik Cube, depends in various ways on the earliest states. Close quote. And this, this is where optimism comes into the equation. Dr. Edmonds, you know, this young mother of two, says 90% of the time she feels quite hopeful. Quote, I remain focused on hoping that I, that I can be part of the solution to give my children a healthy happy future. To maintain her perspective, you know, her optimistic perspective, uh, the clueless moron separates the source of her anxiety, asking which parts of it are climate anxiety, which are just general parenting anxiety, and which are caused by a lack of sleep. Ms. Knight, I have no clue who Ms. Knight is. Who the fuck <coughs> is Ms. Knight? Did I miss, did I miss Ms. Knight? Anyway, we have a new character showing up the mysterious Ms. Knight, whoever the fuck she is, says this cognitive strategy is helpful 
because it prevents catastrophizing. We must prevent catastrophizing. This is a lesson in catastrophizing pre prevention you're hearing on Humpty Dumpty Tribe today. Whoever the mysterious, enigmatic Ms. Knight is, qu quote, it's about being aware of what you can and cannot contribute. So, you can't change everything yourself. Close quote. No shit, Sherlock. The enigmatic Ms. Knight says maintaining positivity requires long-term thinking. Yes, maintaining positivity requires long-term thinking and relying on your community to help shoulder the effort of climate change advocacy. And she recommends, quote, keeping things in measure and realizing that change does take time and that if we look around, we can see that change is slowly escalating, close quote, yes, slowly escalating, like going into overdrive. Change is slowly escalating. Dr. Edmonds says she is also taking action to get her work-life balance under control. For her, that is all part of maintaining the pattern in the collective tapestry of time. And if you enjoyed that article, you might also enjoy some, uh, let's look at some, uh, a few of the other headlines. What to do if a bushfire threatens? ABC Emergency has sourced advice from official agencies on how to plan for a bushfire, including preparing a survival kit. Okay. How about military and government figures have been wargaming to prepare for climate change and they are worried? Yes. Uh, here is inside the devastation and heartache of the burned Bina Burra large. And do not forget, finding ways to fight fire without water as crews, as you know, firefighting crews in Australia face, quote, nightmare scenario. Yes, the nightmare scenario ramping up in Australia in the last 11 days of winter. Anyway, guys, uh, I want to thank my alert Australian tribes members for uh, recommending this hilarious antidote uh, to while you're, you know, uh, hosing your, heart, your yard down from the approaching brush fire, how to think about the philosophy of eternalism. Anyway, I'm going to get out there and enjoy this beautiful day before it burns down. Bye, guys.